The Soviets were known for their exceptional engineering skills. They created some remarkable machines that pushed the limits of what was considered possible. These incredible inventions are sure to leave you amazed. Here are the top 10 most unbelievable Soviet machines that you need to see. Number 10, 1K17 Sati. It is more common than you may think to have laser weapons in today's world. Although not quite at the level of blasters or phasers seen in many science fiction films, some vehicles around the world are using variations of lasers to complete tasks. It is practical to think that such vehicles exist in 2023, but we are referring to the 1990s. The 1K17 Sati, made by the USS, was a tank outfitted with a unique laser weapon designed to take down incoming missiles, disable enemy electronics, and more. If the USA had lasted a few more years and tried to make it work, one can only imagine what would have happened. The laser was extremely effective as a defensive weapon in disabling enemy vehicles, weapons, and visual equipment. It could also be used offensively against biological targets such as humans, including pilots, crew, infantry, and everyone else. These are the same weapons that the United States and other militaries are using to some extent in our world today. For the USSR to have a potentially viable weapon like this in the early 1990s was both impressive and dangerous. However, part of its effectiveness was as a blinding tool on humans, which would have violated the Geneva Convention. Additionally, the tank was so large that it wasn't something that could be easily mass produced and the laser weaponry was hard to manufacture. As a result, it was discontinued before it could even be made in greater numbers, so the USSR was not able to fire the laser. Number 9. 2B1 Oka During the Cold War, the threat of nuclear war loomed over the world. Both the United States and the Soviet Union possessed nuclear weapons and were prepared to use them against each other. However, this posed a problem as it was difficult to determine how and when to use such destructive devices. To address this issue, the United States developed a nuclear-tipped artillery mortar that could be fired from a specially designed vehicle. The Soviet Union, feeling the need to match the United States, developed their own nuclear artillery, the 2B1 RK, which essentially functioned as a tank with a massive barrel designed to fire nuclear ammunition. Despite being displayed in a march in Red Square, the 2B1 Oka was impractical and ridiculous looking and it wasn't taken seriously by the United States or anyone else. The device was eventually removed from production three years later. The development of missile technology made the use of longer barreled artillery tanks obsolete. Today, missiles can be launched with greater accuracy and ease than ever before, making the use of nuclear tipped artillery a thing of the past. Number 8. Bartini Buryev VVA-14 During the Cold War, the United States and the USSR were in constant competition to outdo each other in various ways. This included their military and spying capabilities. The Soviet Union developed a plane called the Bartini Buryev VA-14, which was designed to take off from water and fly high up for long missions. However, it never worked as intended and the project was eventually abandoned. Despite this, the concept was sound and some of the techniques used were applied to other projects. Interestingly, the large aircraft only needed three people to operate it, showing the Soviets' ingenuity. One of the reasons for the development of this plane was to challenge the United States submarines. Moving on to the clever topic, there are rumors of a massive ship allegedly developed by the Soviet military. While there is skepticism about its existence, the ship was reportedly designed to function as a traveling country in extreme post-apocalyptic scenarios. It was equipped with everything necessary for the best minds of the Soviet Union to hunker down in safety and build a new society. You can share your thoughts on this topic in the comments section below using the hashtag CleverTopic. Number 7. The T-55 Progrev T I will continue discussing the T-55 Progrev T, which is a modified tank on my list. If you look at the picture of this tank, you will immediately notice that it resembles a sci-fi vehicle. It was designed to have a new turret infused with special technology 
that had laser-focusing capabilities, which even made the Death Star look like a child's toy. However, the T-55 Progrev T was not a traditional weapon. Instead, it was a tank that was fitted with a jet engine. You may wonder why the USAR would do such a thing. The answer is that they had an idea that by utilizing the power of the jet engine, they could take the T-55 Progrev T to minefields and set off hidden mines through the heat and pressure generated by the jet engine. So it was a very clever idea, considering that minefields are one of the most treacherous things for personnel and vehicles to travel across. Even if they are careful, hidden mines can cause serious damage. Hovercraft can go over them without setting them off, but that's not always a practical solution. Unfortunately, the T-55 Progrev T didn't work as expected, despite its cool appearance. However, someone took inspiration from that idea and invented the big wind firefighting device. It also uses a Soviet jet engine, but funnels water through it to create a powerful firefighting tool. It's a shame that the Soviets couldn't think along those lines, but at least someone eventually did. Number six, SMK tank. During World War II and the Cold War, tanks were crucial on the battlefield, second only to planes and jets in the air. The Soviets were willing to try anything to gain an advantage with their tanks. However, not all their attempts were successful. One such attempt was the SMK tank, a multi-turreted tank designed to handle threats from all angles and be less expensive to produce. This tank was cleverly designed but not effective in combat. The SMK tank had multiple turrets and even a machine gun to protect the rear of the vehicle. However, it was quickly recalled after its deployment in 1939 because it did not perform as well as other tanks. While having multiple barrels can be effective, in this case, it made the tank less maneuverable and less effective in combat. The German Panzer, a single barrel tank, was devastating on the battlefield and proved to be more effective than the SMK tank. Although the SMK tank was not successful, it was still an attempt to innovate and improve tank warfare. Number five, Mikoyan Project 144. Now here's a topic where I honestly don't have all the answers. By the end of World War II, the era of propeller planes had come to an end and the age of jet planes had begun. Interestingly, Germany was the first country to use jet engines on planes. However, the United States and the US Air eventually caught up through creativity and some stealing. The introduction of jet planes marked a new era of aviation, and having the best jet became essential for success. The Mikoyan Project 144 was a fifth-generation fighter jet that had stealth capability, incredible maneuverability, digitally integrated avionics, advanced weapons tracking, and the ability to go supersonic without afterburners. It was a functioning craft that could compete with popular planes like the F-22 Raptor. Although the jet was designed in the early 80s, the only prototype was completed just before the fall of the USSR. The prototype was then shelved and remained untouched until the year 2000 when it was finally tested in the air. Unfortunately, the test flight did not go well due to numerous flaws that kept it from becoming the next-gen fighter it was built to be. One can only wonder what would have happened if the test flight had taken place in the earlier 90s. It's possible that they would have been able to work out all of the bugs and kinks that typically come with a new technology like that. However, the world will simply never know. Number four, Loon Class Ekronoplan. The Loon Class Ekronoplan is a vessel that can turn heads, but not necessarily for positive reasons. It was actually a spin-off vehicle based on the infamous Caspian Sea Monster, which was yet another massive Russian vehicle that didn't really perform as advertised. This class of ship was meant to be smaller and thus more controllable. It was intended to be an anti-aircraft craft and could fire P-270 musket guided missiles from six missile launchers. The craft featured advanced tracking systems that would have made it quite the problem had everything gone to plan. However, the Loon class Ekronoplan didn't last very long in the field. It was deployed in 1987 and then put up on the shelves in 1919. The only fully completed version of the craft was then left alone for 30 years until it was eventually placed into a museum. Another Loon was being built, 
but it was then retooled to be more of a field hospital that could get to other places on the battlefield. The biggest problem with the vehicle was that it couldn't really fly or hover across the water very easily due to its design. Its wings wouldn't allow it to pop off the water and fly away. Using the ground effect to hover over the water did work so long as the seas were not very rough. If it was a stormy day or the water was churning particularly badly, this craft couldn't even get off the water. How very sad. Number three, Yakolev Yak-36 freehand. One of the biggest trends of the Cold War was trying to get vehicles to be more than they were in their standard form. I've already shown you how well that's gone so far, but now I'm gonna talk about an aircraft that was almost an obsession for the United States and the US Air. Sivestol, the vertical takeoff and landing craft, was meant to help eliminate the problems that many crafts like jets had. They always had to have a runway and take off after a long start. However, if you could shift their engines in such a way that it would help them to take off more like a helicopter, then you wouldn't need the long launching and landing pad on the various aircraft carriers and other housing areas for the jets. The Yakulev Yak-36 freehand was one such craft that tried to do that. And to its credit, there are videos that show it doing a vertical takeoff. But as you likely guessed, just because they were able to do it does not mean that they were able to do it effectively. Vertical takeoff and landing vehicles are incredibly complex. And if you do something wrong, you're going to crash your ride. Sadly, that's exactly what happened during one of the test flights of the vehicle. So the Soviets simply decided to go with what works using the classic jet style. And while there are tools in the world today, they're not very widely used, at least not yet. Number two, the Kamov Ka-22. The Kamov Ka-22 was a modified helicopter that differed from the VTOL I previously discussed. Instead of a jet craft that takes off vertically, it used engines that propelled it forward after taking off like a regular helicopter. It combined elements from both types of aircraft. With both advantages and disadvantages, helicopters are better at carrying cargo than certain types of planes, but they have shorter ranges due to their propellers. The purpose of the Karma of Ka-22 was to bridge that gap. It underwent several tests, with the first having control issues that required adjustments to make it safe to fly. Unfortunately, in most of the following tests, there were various issues, including control and mechanical problems, with disastrous results. By then, the USSR had developed a different helicopter that suited their needs better, and so the K-22 was eventually scrapped Number one, the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-105 Epos. Michael Jan Gurevich MiG-105 Epos was an orbital space plane developed by the Russians. During the space race, the United States and the Soviet Union were in competition, and the Russians had beaten the United States in launching the first satellite and the first man in space. However, the United States won the race by landing the first person on the moon. Despite that, the Russians had made many unique innovations over time, including the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-05 Epos. The spacecraft was designed to be a low-speed, low-landing craft that could take off and land under its own power with less risk of crashing. Although it sounds a bit incredible, the Russians made a prototype to see how it worked. They eventually abandoned the project when a better one came along, but their plan to use it for future flights is quite fascinating. That's all from the realm of the Soviet Union and the machines that they built during their tenure. Were you surprised by some of these crazy vehicles and devices that they came up with? And which one was the craziest of the bunch? Perhaps there are others that belong on this list. Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen and I'll see you next time 